Ascendance of a Bookworm is an isekai I don't hate. In fact, I love it. I'm brutal on isekai. They've become a dumping ground for power fantasies, usually from authors who haven't graduated from writing fanfiction. When I'm watching one, my expectations are set very low. So when I say I love this story about a little girl whose goal is to become a librarian in a fantasy world with magic, that's saying something. That should be all the information you need to go watch it, but since this video it needs to be longer and some of you need more convincing, let's get to it. I'm a lazy thief. I have no reason to write about the premise when the esteemed website my anime list has already done it for me. Rano Motosu loves books and has an endless desire to read literature, no matter the subject. She almost fulfills her dream job of becoming a librarian before her life is ended in an accident. As she draws her last breath, she wishes to be able to read more books in her next life. As if fate was listening to her prayer, she wakes up reincarnated as mine, a frail five-year-old girl living in a medieval era. What immediately comes to her mind is her passion. She tries to find something to read, only to become frustrated by the lack of books at her disposal. Without the printing press, books have to be written and copied by hand, making them very expensive. As such, only a few nobles can afford them, but that won't stop mine. She will prove that her will to read is unbreakable, and if there are no books around, she will make them herself. This premise probably sounds very boring, and it's likely why you, along with the majority of the anime community, ignored its existence. For one thing, a girl is the main character, and she isn't carefully designed by a team of perverts to look as fuckable as possible. If the character designer doesn't have at least 10 doujins under their belt, what's even the point? There also aren't any other characters which fit this bill, and people are wearing clothes which cover their bodies. Unfortunately, the character designs are not a traditional fit for the Spank Bank, but that's never stopped people before. The animation quality and color palettes are average and bland. It's functional, but very little stands out. The studio doing this adaptation, Aijia Do, whatever the fuck, is one I've not even heard of. But they've been around since the beginning of the 90s. Holy shit. One of their recent works is another isekai. How not to summon a demon lord. Which, uh, to say the least, is quite a different story. It's more popular, but I'm not sure why. But it clearly shows the studio is capable of putting out prettier looking stuff, so it's strange how this one turned out. But this shouldn't stop you from giving this a try. Appearances aside, there's a well-told, wholesome story that isn't without its dramatic twists and turns. The character writing is excellent. Mine is a sympathetic MC. She struggles in her sickly body, is born into a poor family, and because she's five years old, she doesn't have a ton of freedom. Some things take months for her to accomplish. From the first episode to the tenth, a whole year passes, so unlike the majority of isekai protagonists, she isn't given a fast track to success. The goal isn't even for her to become a hero to save the world, but to change a society to have literature accessible to everyone. This means the power fantasy stuff takes a backseat. It's still present, but subdued. Mine has to earn her victories. Most isekai don't explore the fact the character lived in a world with modern technology. Bookworm isn't afraid to delve into this. Mine uses her modern knowledge as leverage to work toward her goal. It isn't anything as silly like, okay, here's how to build a computer. Instead, it's, here's how to make shampoo. World building is slow. It's presented in digestible morsels. Mine doesn't even know magic exists until episode 3. Anything which prevents an info dump is good. Many things are shown rather than told. Other things are easily inferred rather than explained to the audience. Mine is very smart, but she's not a super genius. She makes mistakes, and her lack of communication skills can cause problems. This helps keep me immersed in the story. Characters with flaws are interesting. Many interactions with her family are wholesome. When she first came to the world, she was understandably put off from accepting them, but over time her feelings changed. A lot of the stuff involving her family are about helping each other. I'd say at times it comes off as a bit unrealistic how accepting they are, about how different and smart their daughter has become. Like, they are too nice. But considering the original mind spent a lot of her time in bed fucking dying, I'd guess they're more happy seeing their daughter alive and out of bed. 
There are dark elements. I said original mine. I mean a five-year-old existed by the name Mine, and when she died from a fever, this college graduate took over her body. This isn't reincarnation or teleportation, it's hijacking the body of a dead little girl. That's fucked up. The new Mine can recall memories from the old one as well, but this detail isn't forgotten, it comes up later. I like it when authors remember when they write things in their stories, it's, it's good writing. As the story begins to progress, Mind begins revealing her power level. People get suspicious. This gives some amazing interaction between characters, preventing things from becoming stale. It goes in unexpected directions, especially for an isekai. See, isekai love to treat characters in the most unrealistic ways possible. They do not question why the isekai character is different from everyone else and knows things they don't. You'd think a simple question for one of their friends or loved ones would be, So why are you a fucking weirdo? I would like a lot more isekai if they gave thought to how people behave in the real world. I like it when characters aren't defined by their tropes. I realize I'm making a lot of harsh comparisons to other isekai, probably many of which are favorites. Just know that it's out of love. I adore this weirdo subgenre when it's done well. So when I see it done right, it makes me want to let people know this genre has a lot more potential than power fantasies for horny teens. I'll take more stuff to aim to girls than another Gary Stu harem romp. Don't get me wrong, I can love trashy stuff, but I prefer substance. Give this one a try. I doubt you'll regret it.